everybody, I'm Raquel. This is my channel where I talk about all things health and homeopathy related. Today, I wanted to talk to you about suppression. It's a word that I use quite a bit. I kind of wanted to give you my two cents on what it is and what it means um, because it comes up a lot, especially when you're talking about homeopathic philosophy and use. If you are new here, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done it already, be sure and subscribe and hit the alert button that pops up right after you hit the subscribe button so that you get notifications every time I post a new video, which is usually on Tuesdays. If you like the video, be sure and give it a thumbs up below. Let me know. If you have comments, questions, suggestions for future videos, tell me about those down in the comments too. And if you, if you like the video and you know somebody who could benefit from it, share it with them, tell everybody that you can about the wonderful, wonderful healing art of homeopathy. Please remember that the information in this video is for educational purposes only and is not intended as medical advice for your specific situation. So what is suppression? Well, the homeopathic term suppression is used to describe something that stops the expression of symptoms without addressing the root cause of why those symptoms were there in the first place. An example would be taking Advil for a headache. The Advil turns off the pain receptors, removes the pain sensation, but it doesn't remove the reason why you had the headache in the first place. That underlying, symptoms, that underlying cause of those symptoms is still there. It's just you've turned off the signals. I really like the analogy that my homeopath uses. She talks about how each one of your symptoms is like the check engine light on your car. It's a warning light telling you that something underneath is going on that's wrong and needs to be addressed. But if you approach these symptoms suppressively, where all you do is remove the symptom, it's the same as simply unscrewing the check engine light on your car instead of fixing the underlying problem, instead of refilling the oil. You're gonna end up with a much bigger problem later down the road if all you do is remove the signals instead of the actual cause. It is important to note that any form of treatment can be suppressive from conventional medicine, surgery, um, herbal medicine, even homeopathy can be suppressive. Yes, you heard me correctly. Even homeopathic remedies, when used improperly, can suppress symptoms. This is why it is so important to choose the right remedy based on the most like symptoms, the law of similars, and to dose it based on the law of the minimum dose. And this is why at this point in time, as far as the knowledge that I have gleaned so far in my studies, I think that the classical approach where a single remedy that is most like the symptoms that you are given or the symptoms that you are experiencing is given at a time, a single remedy at a time um, versus some of the protocol based approaches that might give several remedies all at once with various repetitions that don't necessarily follow the law of the minimum dose. I do believe that that sort of prescribing can be suppressive. There are, of, of course, homeopaths who disagree with me because they practice this way, but I think it is definitely something to be aware of and to be careful about. So that's one of the big reasons why I am a huge proponent of classical homeopathy and finding the similimum, the one most like remedy. Something else that it's good to be aware of is that vitamins and mineral supplements can also be suppressive. Because think about it this way, if your body is healthy and functioning the way that it should be, and that you are eating a healthy, nutrient-dense diet, you shouldn't have to supplement with a whole bunch of different vitamins and minerals and a million different things here and there. Yes, I know the food supply is very depleted, especially compared to what it was 50, 100 years ago. So there may be some instances where it's a good idea to take extra, extra nutrients, extra food. Um, I prefer when I'm in a supplement to get extra nutrients that I think might be lacking from the food supply because not all of us can live on our own biodynamic homesteads, although that is a good dream to have one day. Um, 
I prefer to get it from foods, things like spirulina, liver, different things that are definitely more nutrient dense and that we might not be getting in our everyday diet to supplement those extra nutrients that may have been missed because of the depleted food supply. But if you find yourself needing to supplement with individual nutrients on a regular basis, and especially in higher doses like vitamin D, like vitamin K, like vitamin C, or any of those like that, and you have a good, healthy, nutrient-dense diet and you still are finding that you're deficient in these things, there's a reason for that. Your body, for whatever reason, is not able to uptake these nutrients properly. And if you're just throwing more nutrients at them, or at yourself, it's not going to solve the problem. It might help you, you know, finally get sort of enough, but you might find that you need more and more over time, or you might find that your body still isn't using what you're throwing at it, and you're just wasting money. It's much better to go in and have a single homeopathic remedy that addresses those absorptive issues so that your body can better utilize the food that you're already eating. This is especially true for supplements that are no longer just purely um, vitamin or mineral nutrients, but things like whole amino acids or melatonin. I know so many people who say, oh, I take melatonin, it helps me sleep. But your body is supposed to be able to make melatonin so that you can sleep. If it's having trouble falling asleep at night or staying asleep at night, you're not gonna solve that problem by giving it more melatonin. You have to go in and figure out why your body isn't making the right amount, if it's making the right amount, why it isn't utilizing it properly. Maybe melatonin isn't really your problem. Maybe it's something else and the melatonin just kind of masks that when you take it. You, it's so much better, it will be so much better for you over the long run if you can address the underlying cause and get your body functioning in peak form and then you won't need to add in these other hormones. Melatonin is a powerful hormone and it can have repercussions over a long period of time. So, do yourself a favor, address the root cause. Stop suppressing the warning lights your body is sending you and and really take control of your health. I've been there. I took hundreds of dollars of supplements every month and I was still having issues, but you know what? I did not realize how bad I still felt taking all of those because they did help a lot of my symptoms to a certain degree, but I didn't realize how bad I still felt until I found, or my homeopath found, that Similimum, my remedy, and I took it and I started to experience life and it was like my body woke up and I realized, at that point I could realize just how bad I had still been feeling over those past several years of supplement use to try to correct all of these deficiencies when what my body really needed was to correct the reason why it had those deficiencies in the first place. All right. I hope that kind of explains suppression, explains what I mean when you hear it in other videos. So I, I hope that answers some of your questions. If you have more or things are still a little cloudy for you, tell me down below. I want to hear from you. I'll do my best to answer them. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you again soon.